Hello, this is Dr. Hena Asil, and these are questions and answers on acids, bases, and salts for the IGCSE chemistry. So, one of the types of questions is which one of the following values is most likely to represent the pH of a dilute solution of ammonia? You should know that the pH scale is 1 to 14, anything less than 7 is acid anything more than seven is a base so if i'm talking about dilute solution of ammonia you should know that ammonia is a weak base a weak base will have ph 8 or 9 or 10 so out of these choices ph 9 could be the ph of ammonia then he's saying the ph of mineral water is 7.8 which one of the following best describes this pH? You should know that 7 is neutral, but anything above 7 is a base. So actually 7.8 is above 7. It is weakly basic or slightly alkaline. Remember that the word alkali means a base that dissolves in water. So alkaline is the same as base but it's a base that dissolves in water. 7.8 would be slightly alkaline. Which one of the following values is most likely to represent the pH of dilute solution of hydrochloric acid? Again, looking at the pH scale, you should realize that acids in general are less than 7, but hydrochloric acid is... A strong acid so actually it would be pH 1 or 2 or 3 so pH 2 is correct if we say that something has a pH 6 which of the following gives the best description for pH 6 well you should realize that 4 or 5 or 6 is a weak acid which one of the following is an alkali? Again, what do we mean by alkali? Alkali means a base that dissolves in water. How do I know if something is a base? Usually if it is oxide or hydroxide of a metal. So sodium hydroxide is an alkali. Then here he's saying hydrogen chloride dissolves in water to form an acidic solution, which we call hydrochloric acid. Describe how you would use litmus paper to show that this solution is acidic. Okay, how do we use litmus paper? You should know that litmus paper is either blue or red. If I put a blue litmus paper in acid, it will turn red. If I put a red litmus paper in a base, it will turn to blue. So he wants to know if something is acidic, I would insert blue litmus paper it should turn to red this question says an aqueous solution of the organic compound methyl amine has a ph greater than seven which statement is correct so first of all ph greater than seven is that acid or base you should realize that that is a base so he's asking which of these is the reaction of a base so the first one says it neutralizes an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide. What is sodium hydroxide? Sodium hydroxide is a base and you cannot have a base reacting with a base. So that is wrong. B says it reacts with copper carbonate to give carbon dioxide. Which kind of substance reacts with carbonate to give carbon dioxide? You should realize that acids react with carbonate to form salt plus carbon dioxide plus water so he's talking about an acid not a base what about c c says it reacts with hydrochloric acid to form a salt yes an acid would react with a base to form a salt so that is actually our answer number d says it turns blue litmus to red you should realize that if it's the base it should turn the red to blue not what he has here okay this one says hydrochloric acid is used to clean a metal surface by removing the oxide layer on the metal this is because hydrochloric acid has what kind of ph high or low 
you should realize hydrochloric acid is a strong acid the pH is one or two or three so hydrochloric acid would have a low pH now when the acid reacts with something that means that thing is what so if it reacts with metal oxide then that means the metal oxide is a base an acid reacts with base a base would react with acid element x is at the left hand side of the periodic table which line shows the correct type and the property of the oxide of x so if he says x is on the left hand side of the periodic table that means it's a metal so the type of oxide is a metallic oxide now uh, oxides of a metal are usually what you should realize oxides of metals are usually basic of course there are some exceptions that we'll talk about later but for now let's say that the oxides of metals are usually basic the apparatus shown can be used to prepare aqueous copper sulfate what are the substances x and y well let's see he's trying to make copper sulfate which of these can we use to make copper sulfate remember that to add to sulfuric acid i should add a base so the base that i need is copper oxide so my answer is c barium hydroxide is an alkali it reacts with hydrochloric acid so what happens to the ph of a solution of hydrochloric acid as an excess notice excess of aqueous barium hydroxide is added okay so we have hydrochloric acid in the flask so i'm starting with ph what you should realize that hydrochloric acid has ph one or two or three so my answer is c or d i'm starting from ph one then if i add excess of barium hydroxide that means that i have a lot of barium hydroxide which is a strong base and that means that my ph should change from 1 to 40. ph of some aqueous sodium hydroxide is measured the solution is then distilled as shown how do the ph values of the distillate and the solution left in the flask compare with the original solution okay remember that sodium hydroxide solution originally is sodium hydroxide is a strong base so the solution would have a ph of 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. now what is the distillate you should realize that the distillate that comes out is pure water so that is something that has ph 7. so compared to the solution in the flask the ph of the distillate is lower so i'm choosing c or d and then after i remove some of the water what would happen to the solution in the flask it would become more concentrated and that means it becomes higher ph so instead of 11 for example it becomes 13 or 14. a solution of zinc sulfate can be made by adding an excess either of zinc carbonate or zinc hydroxide to dilute hydrochloric acid again once he mentions the word excess of what i'm starting with that means we're talking about the neutralization method and the neutralization method starts with things that are insoluble so zinc carbonate and zinc hydroxide are insoluble and that means i need to add them both in the form of a solid so i add excess of solid zinc carbonate to my sulfuric acid and then i filter or excess of solid zinc hydroxide to the sulfuric acid and filter. so my answer is d the diagrams show three experiments using dilute sulfuric acid three different powders are added to the acid the mixtures are stirred which test tubes then contain copper 2 plus iron now you should realize that in order to contain copper 2 plus ions then that means there must be a reaction that means a reaction must have happened now if i put copper powder with sulfuric acid does copper react with sulfuric acid 
you should realize that copper is a less reactive metal than hydrogen. It would not react with acid, so there is no reaction in one. So I will not have copper ions. I will just have the copper powder remaining at the bottom of the solution or at the bottom of the test. What if I add copper hydroxide to sulfuric acid? Well, copper hydroxide is a base, so it would react with sulfuric acid to form salt plus water. So I will end up with copper ion. Copper carbonate, yes, carbonates plus acids would react to form copper ion. So I will have reactions in only test tubes two and three. Two indicators, bromophenol blue and Congo red, show the following colors in acidic solutions and in alkaline solutions. Of course, we did not study these indicators, but he's telling you the color of each one when you put it in acid and the color in, when you put it in a base. Then he's saying a few drops of each indicator are added to separate samples of a solution of pH 2. Now the question is, what is pH 2? Acid or alkali? You should realize that pH 2 is acid and that means if I put, put bromophenol blue into it, it should be yellow and the Congo red should be white. So my answer is D. Some reactions of a substance are shown in the diagram. So he's saying substance R would react with magnesium, which is a metal, a carbonate to give carbon dioxide gas, a base to give a salt. So what kind of substance reacts with metal to give salt plus hydrogen? Carbonate to give salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Base to give salt and water. So my R must be an acid. Dilute hydrochloric acid is added to solid S. So he's adding hydrochloric acid to something. A flammable gas is formed and gas is less dense than air. So first of all, what is the gas that is formed? I'm looking for something that will give a flammable gas that is less dense than air. And my choices are hydrogen or carbon dioxide. Of course, that means I'm talking about hydrogen. Hydrogen is a flammable gas, less dense than. So if I am getting hydrogen gas, that means that the hydrochloric acid reacted with what? Remember, to get hydrogen gas, the acid reacts with a metal. Now I have two choices, A and C. So is it going to react with copper or is it going to react with zinc? Again, remember that copper plus an acid will not react. There is no reaction. So it is the zinc that would react with hydrochloric acid to give hydrogen gas. So that is my answer. Ant stings hurt because of methanoic acid produced by the ant. Which substance could most safely be used to neutralize the acid? Of course, to neutralize the acid, I need a base. A base is something that has pH higher than 7. So my choices are either A or D. But he's saying something that I would put safely on my skin. You should realize that something that has pH 14 is a very strong base and strong bases are corrosive. So my answer must be A that has pH 8. Which reaction will result in a decrease in pH? Well, to decrease the pH of a solution, should I add acid or base? I should add acid. So the one that says add acid, that is the one that would decrease the pH. So that is B. Are we following so far? Acids are compounds which donate protons or give protons. And we said protons here mean hydrogen ions or H plus ions. Which compound in this equation is behaving as an acid? So he's asking which compound here is giving H plus ions? That is what? Copper sulfate crystals are blue. They are made by adding excess copper oxide to sulfuric acid. The mixture is heated and stirred. It is then filtered and the filtrate is allowed to evaporate, leaving blue crystals. Why do we filter? 
Remember again, to make copper sulfate, I add excess copper oxide to sulfuric acid in a beaker. Um, this, we, if he says, why are we adding excess? This is to make sure that all the acid has reacted. Now, once we have excess solid remaining in the beaker, what we should do next is filter. And he's saying, why are we filtering? We're filtering to remove the unreacted copper oxide or the excess copper oxide that remained at the bottom of the beaker. Information about the solubility in water of four oxides is shown. Which oxide, when added to water, gives a solution with a pH less than 7? Of course, pH less than 7 means acidic. Which kind of compound forms acidic oxides? You should realize that the ones that form acidic oxides are oxides of non-metal. Okay, I have two choices, A and C. Nitrogen is a non-metal, silicon is a non-metal. The others are metals, so they cannot be correct. Okay, A and C, but he's saying when added to water, it gives a solution. That means I want something that is soluble in water or insoluble in water. Well, it has to be soluble in water, so nitrogen dioxide, dissolve it in water, it will give a pH less than. Then, in some cases, he asks complete the word equation. You should realize the reactions of acid. For example, acid plus carbonate gives sol. So, in this case, calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid, my salt is calcium chloride. And you have to remember that carbonate with acid has to give carbon dioxide plus water. Zinc plus hydrochloric acid. This is metal plus acid. We said if metal reacts with acid, it gives the salt. In this case, it's zinc chloride plus which gas? Hydrogen. Which type of oxide is phosphorus oxide? Well, you should realize, look at the periodic table. Is phosphorus an acid, uh, a metal, or a non-metal? Well, phosphorus is a non-metal. So its oxide would be acidic. Complete the word equation for this reaction. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. Again, a metal plus acid should give what? You should realize it should give a salt. Now, which salt will this be? Magnesium with hydrochloric will be magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. Here he's saying hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide. Anything hydroxide is a base. So hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide. This is acid plus base. It should give me a salt. So which salt is this? Calcium chloride plus water. Here you have a symbol equation, lithium plus HI. Of course, HI is hydroiodic acid. So this is like hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. So it reacts in the same way. Acid plus metal will give a salt. In this case, it's lithium iodide plus hydrogen. Remember, if he starts with a symbol equation, you should end it up with a symbol equation. Hydrogen, of course, is diatomic, so it has to be H2, and you have to balance. So, balancing, I have two hydrogens after the arrow, I need to put two hydrogens before the arrow. And that means that now I have two iodine before the arrow, so I need two in front of the lithium iodide. And that means now I have two lithium, so I need. Please practice uh, writing symbol equations and balancing them. Now, this second equation is starting as a word equation. You have to complete it with word. You cannot complete it with symbol. So, word, you complete with word. Symbol, you complete with symbol. So, zinc carbonate plus hydroiodic acid. Again, this is a carbonate with acid. First of all, it should give me a salt. Now, in this case, which salt? Zinc iodide plus carbon dioxide plus water. 
if I'm saying magnesium oxide plus hydroiodic acid. This is an acid with a base. So it should give me a salt, magnesium iodide. And remember that the valency of magnesium is 2. So you put a 2 under the iodine. Plus what? This is acid plus base. So it should give salt plus water. And then you have to back. Okay. Here again, if I'm starting with word i have to complete it with word now what does he have sodium hydroxide plus something we haven't heard about so he's saying it's reacting with an acid which he's going to call malonic acid so this is an acid acid plus base should give salt now what would be the salt here the salt is sodium malonate plus what plus what the other reaction is copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. You should realize this gives copper sulfate plus water. Now, magnesium plus this kind of acid is what we call an organic acid. So if he has CH2 bracket COOH bracket 2, this is an organic acid. And in organic acids, the metal replaces the hydrogen in COOH. Can you see COOH? I'm going to remove that H and put magnesium. And of course, magnesium is valency 2, so you have two of the hydrogens which is already in the acid removed. So this is the formula of my product. Then metal plus acid should give salt plus hydrogen. Can you see that it is balanced? Okay, if I have potassium carbonate plus sulfuric acid, what kind of salt do I get? Potassium sulfate, and remember that the valency of sulfate is 2, so I have to put 2 under the potassium, plus carbonate plus acid should give carbon dioxide plus what? And please check, this is bad. Okay, again, zinc plus hydrochloric acid would give zinc chloride plus this is metal plus acid. It will give salt plus hydrogen. And don't forget to balance. Zinc oxide plus sulfuric acid. Now this gives what? This gives zinc sulfate plus, you should realize zinc oxide is a base. Acid plus base gives salt plus water. If I'm trying to make calcium chloride, Calcium chloride is a salt. So just the name of an acid and a base that would react together to make calcium chloride. Okay, I want to make calcium chloride. Which acid? I need the acid that has chlorine. So that is hydrochloric acid. And then I need calcium something that's a base. So calcium hydroxide. Okay. The next one says calcium oxide plus nitric acid. Again, calcium oxide is a base. Acid plus base would give salt plus water. And the salt here is calcium nitrate. Are we okay with all of this? Okay, the diagram shows some of the elements in period three. Uh, from the diagram, choose one element which forms a basic oxide. Again, the one that forms basic oxide must be. A metal so sodium or magnesium would form basic oxides now he wants two elements that would form acidic oxide so of course to form acidic oxide I must have a non metal so silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine remember I cannot use argon because argon is inert unreactive full outer shell In an experiment, 0.1 gram samples of these are added to separate 100 centimeter cubed volumes of water. For which oxide is the resulting mixture most alkaline? Remember, most alkaline means oxide of a more reactive metal. So which of these is an oxide of a more reactive metal? Of course, sodium oxide would be most alkaline. Define the term acid. Remember, we define acid as proton donor. 
Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Ethane diobic acid is a weak acid. Given solutions of both acids, how could you show that sulfuric acid is strong and ethane diobic acid is weak? Of course, we use universal indicator paper. So I would tell him, insert universal indicator paper, compare the color to the chart. Now, the one that he says is strong should have lower pH or specify that it would have pH 1 to 3. Or you could say that it would give a red color with the universal indicator paper. While the one that is weaker acid, uh, such as uh, ethane diobic acid, then this would have a pH of 4 to 6. Or you could tell him it will give yellow or orange. Define the term base. Base is proton acceptor. Given aqueous solutions of ammonia and sodium hydroxide, both having a concentration of 0.1, so they have the same concentration, but they are different types of bases. How could you show that ammonia is the weaker base? Again, I would tell him insert universal indicator paper and compare the color to the chart. Now, the one that is weaker should have lower pH, or you could say um, specific pHs. So, for example, uh, you could say that ammonia would have pH 8, 9, or 10, while sodium hydroxide would have pHs 11 to 14. This kind of question says the phosphate ion from the rock phosphate is changed into something. What type of reagent is the phosphate ion? So I look at the equation. What did the phosphate ion do? The phosphate ion took H plus from the acid, so it is acting as a base. So if he says give a reason, it's a base because it accepts protons. This was an experiment where he says citric acid can be extracted from lemon juice and he gives different stages. Add calcium carbonate to hot lemon juice, filter off the precipitate which is formed, wash the precipitate with water, add sulfuric acid to the calcium citrate to make a solution of citric acid, then crystallize the acid. So the first question says, when calcium carbonate is added to lemon juice, a fizzing is observed. Explain why there is a fizzing. Of course, we said the lemon juice is acidic. So if you add carbonate to acid, what you get is carbon dioxide gas, and that is why you see fizzing. So carbon dioxide gas is given off. Now draw a diagram to show step two. What was he doing in step two? He was filtering off the precipitate. So what you're supposed to draw is a diagram for filtration. So just why the calcium citrate precipitate is washed with water. Remember, the residue, we wash it with water. Why do we wash a residue with water? To remove soluble impurities. Describe how you would carry out step five. In step five, he was saying crystallize. How do we do crystallization? We said we heat to point of crystallization and then cool to form crystals. Don't forget to say cool. You have to heat to point of crystallization, then cool to form crystals. Filter the crystals through filter paper and funnel. And then you could say we were, will be washing the residue with a few drops of distilled water and dry between filter papers, especially if he wants it pure and dry. The graph below shows how pH changes when aqueous ammonia is neutralized by hydrochloric acid. So he's starting with ammonia in the flask and he's adding hydrochloric acid from a burette. Now, what is the pH of the aqueous ammonia? So looking at the graph at the top, what did we start with? We started with pH 10.8. And then what volume of hydrochloric acid has been added when pH is 10? Where is pH 10? pH 10 gives a volume from the graph of 1.5 centimeter cubed. 
what volume of hydrochloric acid has been added when the pH is changing most quickly? So where is it dropping very quickly? That is at a volume of 13.0 centimeter cubed. Okay, another type of question is where he has a table like this and he's saying, I'm going to prepare salts. Now you need to mention what are the reagents. Again, I'm going to remind you the word reagent means the substance that is reacting. So if I want to make sodium nitrate and he's doing it by titration, that means I need to start with soluble substance. So which acid and which base should I react in order to get sodium nitrate? Of course, I need a base that has sodium something, sodium hydroxide, so that would be my base. And I need an acid that has nitrate. The acid that has nitrate is called nitric acid. What if I'm trying to make copper nitrate by neutralization? Neutralization means I need to add a solid, excess solid, to the acid. So to make copper nitrate, which base should I use? Copper 2 oxide. I'm trying to make silver chloride by precipitation. Precipitation means I need to add two soluble solutions to form a precipitate. So I need silver something that is soluble. And you should know that all nitrates are soluble. And then I need something chloride that is soluble. You should know that sodium anything is soluble. Now, if I'm doing neutralization and I'm adding excess zinc carbonate to sulfuric acid, which salt am I trying to make? Of course, I'm trying to make zinc sulfate. Okay, this is another type of question where he says, okay, the student's notebook says 25 centimeter cubed of aqueous potassium hydroxide were placed in a flask. A few drops of indicator were added. Dilute hydrochloric acid was added to the flask until the indicator changed color. The volume of acid used was 19 centimeter cubed. So, of course, the first thing you ask yourself, which method is he using? Well, if he's using a burette and a flask and things like that, and an indicator, then he's doing titration. What piece of apparatus should be used to measure the aqueous potassium hydroxide? We said to do titration, we put 25.0 centimeter cubed of aqueous potassium hydroxide into a flask using, using a pipette. Name a suitable indicator. We can use any indicator from the ones that we studied, we can use methyl orange or thymol thaline. So if I say methyl orange, remember for titration, we need an indicator that is a solution. So we use either methyl orange or thymol thaline. If I use methyl orange, I'm adding it to a base. So I'm starting with yellow and then at the end point, the solution is neutral. So methyl orange will change to orange. Which solution was more concentrated? Well, I needed 25 centimeter cubed of the potassium hydroxide. Now, the amount of acid I needed to neutralize that was only 19. That means that the acid was more concentrated since I needed less of it. So I needed less of it to neutralize the base. Okay, the diagram shows apparatus used by a student to find concentration of hydrochloric acid. So what is the name of the apparatus? Of course, this is a burette. Remember, if it has a tap and graduations, it's a burette. Now, what do we use to put the hydrochloric acid into the flask? We use a pipette. And the hydrochloric acid, of course, is put into a flask. Remember, when we do titration we don't use beaker we use a flask then he's asking how could the student tell when the solution was neutral so if i'm trying to add uh, sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid how do i know that my solution has become neutral well in order to determine that i should put an indicator at the beginning so let us say for example methyl orange 
So I will tell him, put methyl orange in the flask at the beginning. It should turn from what to what. Notice what is in the flask. He's starting with hydrochloric acid. Methyl orange in acid is red. And then I'm going to add base from the burette until it becomes neutral. Methyl orange is orange when it is neutral. Soluble salts can be made by neutralization of an acid by a base. Insoluble salts can be made by precipitation. And he's saying the following is a brief description of the preparation of the soluble salt nickel chloride six water. Of course, six water means it is hydrated. So we're trying to make a soluble salt, nickel chloride six water, starting with something that is insoluble. And we said if we start with something that is insoluble means he's going to use neutralization method. Okay, nickel carbonate is added to small amounts, in small amounts, to hot dilute hydrochloric acid until it is excess. So he added the solid nickel carbonate until it's excess. The mixture is filtered, the filtrate is partially evaporated, and then allowed to cool until crystals form. First of all, why is it necessary to use excess carbonate? Remember, we use excess of the solid to make sure that all the acid has reacted. Explain why it's necessary to filter. Remember, he says the mixture is filtered because we have excess nickel carbonate in the beaker, so we need to remove the excess solid. Why partially evaporate rather than evaporate to dryness? Remember, we always say heat to point of crystallization. We don't heat to evaporate all the water. Why? Especially because in this case, I'm trying to prepare a hydrated salt. So I want to avoid loss of water of crystallization or in order to prepare a hydrated salt. Uh, remember, if it is not hydrated, then I would also still need to heat to point of crystallization to avoid breakdown of the crystals. So you can see avoid loss of water of crystallization or to avoid breakdown of the crystal. Now, what additional steps are needed to obtain dry crystals? Where did he stop? He said the filtrate is partially evaporated and then allowed to cool until the crystals form. So I have the solution with the crystals in it. What should I do next? Filter the crystals through filter paper and funnel and dry the crystals between filter paper. He wants to obtain dry crystals. Then this is a kind of uh, question that is present at the end of paper six. So he says, oven cleaners contain an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide. Plan an investigation to show which of two different oven cleaners contains the more concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. Basically, I have two solutions of sodium hydroxide and I want to know which one is more concentrated. So what should we do? We should use titration. We should titrate with the first solution. So I will tell him put 25 centimeter cubed of the first solution into a flask using a pipette. Add three drops of a certain indicator. So be specific. For example, thymol phthalene. If you add it to a base, the solution turns blue. Then you add HCl from a burette until the blue color disappears and note the volume of acid used. Then we're going to repeat with the same volume. You have to mention that you're going to repeat with the same volume, 25 centimeter cubed of the other alkali solution. The one that uses more acid is more concentrated. Okay, this is the end of the questions and answers on acids and bases. Uh, I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for listening.